Good morning, everybody. Hello, how's it going? Woo, doing well, thank you. All right, my name is Andrea Zingerman. I will be your no cow uh, pot substitute today. And um, we will be going through the meeting agenda. Thanks all for coming. So first of all, the Friends of the Tree, time to get your clapping hands ready. We have Clauber and Mariana for their awesome support of Potch and David Walsh this past weekend at the Developer Conference in Brazil. They talked to hundreds of young Brazilian developers in the hack room. All right. Cool. And then we have Rodrigo and Ricardo for their FFOS evangelism efforts last week and the Latino Wear Conference in Foz de Iguacu. Oh, Foz de Iguacu, Brazil. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, what upcoming events do we have this week? On Monday, Fennec Private Browsing. Okay, go ahead and click there. Sorry, something happened with HTML. Um, on Tuesday, come test the mobile web from 12.30 to 1.30 Pacific Time and 10 forward. Um, sign up at that link there, and there are details in the speaker section. On Wednesday, we are having our weekly mobile meeting at 3 p.m. in Michelle Luna's room, so go ahead and click the Etherpad if you want to learn more about that. On Thursday, it's a busy week, isn't it? On Thursday, we have a two weekly ask a question day all day. I assume people who that is relevant to will know what that means. And the uh, SecView threat model, yeah, that is a lot of stuff, and I apologize. It's 10 a.m. on Thursday. Be there. On Friday, same thing, 11 a.m. Please go there. Figure that out for me. Um, okay, here we have voice updates. Firefox desktop in Toronto. Do we have John? Howdy, folks. Hi. Um, last week I abused my bully pulpit by talking at you for a long time about incredible things. So this time I'm going to keep it really short and only talk about one incredible thing, which is that the social API is now live in beta. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a lot of work from a lot of people, both on our side and actually over in the Facebook Messenger group, over with those people. Uh, but it's live now, and uh, if you're not using Beta or Aurora or Nightly, please start. Um, and then go to Facebook, whereupon you should be offered this miraculous integration, and that'll be exciting. If for some reason you don't get offered, but you still want a sneak peek, there's a link there that'll take you directly to the activation page because you're Mazillions and we love you extra much. Uh, that's all I got. Please test it and file lots of bugs. Cool. Thanks, John. Okay. And the speaker section. Do we have Lawrence Mandel? Cool. Come on yeah, up. Yes. Thanks for coming here. All the way from Toronto, right? That's right. Yeah. Awesome. I'm here from Toronto. So, hi, I'm Lawrence Mandel. I'm an engineering project manager and among other things, I work on uh, web compatibility. So I thought, given that I'm in Mountain View, I'll give an update on where we are with uh, mobile web compatibility. Um, so the, the problem we have here is we're developing two great products, um, mobile products right now, Firefox for Android and uh, Firefox OS. And the content that's served to these platforms is not directly under Mozilla's control. But this content does have a direct in, impact on the user experience of these products. Um, so this is something that we're trying to tackle and figure out what we can do about it. So there are four main issues, and this is for background in case you didn't hear me talk about this before. User agent sniffing, this is where a site recognizes our user agent and determines whether we're a mobile browser. And the, the issue here is that many sites don't understand Firefox OS and uh, Fennec to be mobile browsers and so serve us desktop content. WebKit specific CSS is CSS that's prefixed with uh, a WebKit specific prefix and so Gecko doesn't understand it. Functional DOM or JavaScript issues are other functional issues that are site specific that cause them to break in our browsers. And then there's Gecko limitations which are issues with our own platform. So looking at user agent sniffing, we have two mitigation strategies right now. The Firefox OS domain whitelist recently landed. What this means is we can um, serve a custom UA uh, to any specific domain. So this is something that's hard-coded in our product, and this gets around them having to update 
their user agent. This is not a long-term strategy. This is a short-term strategy while we do evangelism to get them to fix their site. The second thing that we're doing here is to promote feature detection over user agent sniffing. So this is where you don't detect the type of browser, the specific browser that's connecting, but instead you try and detect what are the features that that browser supports. And our dev engagement team has been out for a long time and continues to push on this strategy. Uh, in terms of WebKit specific CSS, our layout team has been aggressively unprefixing CSS properties. You can see here a list of the property and values that they have prefixed in 16. They have uh, a list of other properties and values that they're going to try and target for the rest of this year, and it's fairly aggressive. The other thing that we've done here is we looked at aliasing WebKit CSS prefixes in Gecko and what win that would get us, so if that would improve things. The general thought is that it would. In our limited uh, analysis that we did, um, with a limited set of sites, what we actually saw is only a, a small percentage of sites were actually impacted, were actually fixed by doing this. Um, so even when you get past user agent sniffing and you alias the WebKit prefixes, you don't necessarily get all the way there. And that takes us to functional DOM JavaScript issues. So H.264 support is the first one on here. That's a functional issue. It's not DOM or JavaScript specific, but this is something that's going into our browser. We now have H.264 support. It's not perfect. It doesn't support everything. But at this point, it's much improved, and we're continuing to make uh, improvements there. The second one here is a deep dive investigation into functional issues. So in those sites in our other study, where we get past the user agent sniffing, and then we get past WebKit-specific CSS properties, why are those sites still broken? Um, so we have a plan to actually do this, except we don't have the people to do it. So if you have the skills, please come and talk to me. Um, we have a short list of sites that we want to analyze here. Um, and you could play uh, a big role in trying to determine what we can do. Because if we're going to do any sort of aliasing um, at all, it's going to be from the top down. We're going to have to combat, again, user agent sniffing, WebKit CSS aliasing, and then whatever these issues are that we discover that are continuing to have our, uh, the sites broken in our browsers. And looking at Gecko limitations, we have uh, layout performance issues that the layout team fixed in the uh, spring and early summer. Um, Get User Media was recently discovered to have an issue, and there's um, continued testing going on with H.264 ABC profile support, so we can support more of the H.264 encoded media online. And then other issues continue to pop up, and we continue to fix those in our platform. So th these are things that we actually have more control over. So at this point, I haven't really talked much about evangelism, um, but we're doing site testing and evangelism as well. Um, this is uh, effective, but it's slow and labor intensive. We need more hands is really what it comes down to. A handful of people is not going to make the significant dent that we need to make here. We're tracking our progress on arewecompatibleyet.com, um, so you can go there and see how far we've gotten. Um, the other type of tool that the A-team is currently developing is a tool called Spade, and this tool is going to give us a better view into the percentage of sites that actually do use user agent sniffing and cause problems with Firefox and CSS property usage uh, that we're not able to deal with. So that's not quite ready yet, but that's going to give us a bigger picture of the problem uh, space. And some examples that you can see on here are sites where we've had successful evangelism efforts. And we can take a look at a few of those as well. So on the left, we see the Google static HTML site that we used to be served, and now we get their HTML5 based site. To be honest, with Google, we don't get the same site as the Android stock browser or the iPhone, but this is a vastly improved experience um, over what we were getting before. Similarly with Facebook, we were getting a static HTML page before. Now we have a dynamic HTML5 based app. This is the same one that served everywhere and Facebook continues to engage with us to fix issues uh, in their application. And Twitter's the same story. Again, we were getting the static site and now we're getting a dynamic one. It's interesting in all of these cases, this was more than a simple um, recognize our browser, change your user agent sniffing. This was more than simple update your CSS properties. They actually had functional issues with all of these sites that they had to address and we've worked with them to do that. Um, this is in contrast to sites like Instagram or IMDb, where they simply had to recognize our user agent and their site automatically worked uh, with Fennec. So I'll wrap up with a quote from Obama, seems timely. Uh, the best way to not feel hopeless is to get up and do something. So I would encourage you all to come tomorrow, right here, noon to 1.30, site test event uh, in Mountain View. We're going to be testing mobile sites. Yes? The JavaScript guys have this room booked all day tomorrow. You're going to need nope, to sort No, no, I've, I've already arranged it. We're good to go. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, the comment was the JavaScript guys have it, and they've graciously agreed to go out to lunch so that we can have this room. So thank you, JavaScript team. Um, yes, I know. It was, it was a real arm twist. Um, so come test, report bugs. We're going to try and get through a chunk of the top 1,000 sites. Um, again, we need hands to do this before we can go out and evangelize. We need to understand what the issues are. There's an etherpad to sign up. This, isn't, this doesn't mean you have to sign up to come. This is to get an idea of numbers for catering and everything else, because we will have lunch here. And please remember to bring your Android phone if you have one. If you don't, put your name under the list on the etherpad, and we'll try to arrange to have one for you. 
that's it. Again, I'm Lawrence Mandel. If you have questions, you can find me um, on IRC as L Mandel, or I'm around all week. Yes, there is a question. Um, are you also testing internal websites too? Internal websites? Like the Mozilla Door websites? Uh, not specifically, but we can. I don't have any issue with that. Okay. The question was, are we testing internal websites, Mozilla.org websites? Um, yeah, like, and we can. Like AMO and CML and Mozilla. Kind of a, a selection of so, so like AMO and SUMO, and I would be happy to test those. Yeah, if someone wants to test those, and that's certainly content that we ourselves can fix. So if there is something broken there, we should be able to fix that, and those should be good examples of the right way to do this type of site design. Anything else? Okay, thanks everyone. All right, we have another one up here. No, okay. So now we are going to new hires, and it looks like everybody's going to be in Mountain View. So if you have a new hire, please do come up. Introducer shall be here, and the new hire will be right here on the X. Hello, everybody. Chris Moore from the Web Productions team. I'd like to introduce Jennifer Birch. She's the new product manager for websites, and she's going to be focusing on Mozilla.org in the short term. Uh, so again, her focus is going to be engagement websites, and she'll be at, working on a Mountain View, and her experience is at Travelocity, About.com, Hotwire.com, and a bunch of our high-profile websites. So welcome, Jennifer. I'm Steve Workman from NECO, the, the Gecko networking team, and I'm introducing Randall Dow. He's uh, going to join us and make networking awesome. <laughs> Great. Did we have any last minute updates, speakers, new hires, anything? All right. If that's it. Then enjoy your Monday and the rest of the week. Have Francisco. a great one. Uh oh. Do we have one from San Francisco? San Francisco, do we have one over there? Hang on. Sorry, Yes. Maybe we shout at the person to hear us. Maybe if they can, I'll just introduce. Um, former Mozillian, now Mozillian, always a Wisconsinite, Liz Noonan who is uh, helping us in brand engagement to keep things on track uh, in 2012 and early 2013. So please welcome Liz. She'll be working with Kristen Berry's group closely. Welcome back. Hey, Pete, can you introduce Arcadia, who's down here, if you're still there? Is Arcadia there? Did he survive laptop orientation? Uh, he stepped away. Sorry about that. We'll make it. We'll put it on the agenda for next week. I'm sorry, he left. <laughs> My bad. You'll meet him next week. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Huh? Anybody else from any other common area? <coughs> We're all good. <coughs> Wave your hands like this. <laughs> great. Have a great week, everyone, and keep working the free web. Good job.